This video is not for the faint of heart. So if you're one of those people that easily pees their pants, I suggest you avert your eyes and chop off your ears. Today we're going to do things a little differently. Uh-oh. Today I plan on painting some SCPs, which are like supernatural beings, on some wood. Basically, there's this SCP foundation where I got most of my information from. And it's responsible for locating and containing any individuals, locations, entities, objects that are out of the ordinary. Anything that would freak people out. These stories that I'm about to recount are real stories that happened in or out of my imagination. You know, it's kind of like when you tell people about your paranormal activity experiences and then they don't believe you, but I'm pretty sure that's how the government intended it. I forgot to mention that these are the real stories of the SCPs found on the SCP Foundation website. I did not make up any of these stories myself, and I just thought it would be kind of fun to put myself into them. They're not mine, just letting you guys know. By the way, I changed the time that I post my videos to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're late, that probably means that you don't have notifications on, so you should probably turn those on. If you're new here, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel. Aww. <laughs> Ding dong. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon and select the all option. Ringing it is not enough. You have to select all or I'll be lost on the internet. Forever. I post new videos. Every Friday. So everyone's starting to say that I've gone all sweet and stuff and that's just no, not no, true. No. So today I thought I would share some ghost mm -hmm. stories. Except they're not really ghosts. Yep, yeah. light bulb's broken. They're SCPs. They're real. SCP stands for Secure, Contain, and Protect. So it's just like supernatural entities or beings that need to be contained so people don't freak out or get eaten. It's kind of like UFOs. If everyone found out that UFOs were real, the world would like devolve into chaos and panic and everyone would, would be like freaking out and running around. Things like that need to be kept a secret. You can think of me as the whistleblower. I'm about to tell you everybody's secrets. Clean up crew to aisle 2020. All of the tea is about to be spilled. So basically, <laughs> to, not to brag or anything, but because of my extensive knowledge of monsters and creatures, I was invited prestigiously, <laughs> might I add, <laughs> to one of the SCP containment sites. <laughs> By the way, I should also mention that I got into SCPs in the first place because of Ace of Clay. He tells their stories and turns them into really awesome clay sculptures on his channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description. This is basically where they lock up a lot of quote-unquote monsters. Kind of like a zoo. Rest in peace, Harambe. So on one of these trips, I encountered three SCPs that really stood out to me. These are three of my favorites. The first of which is SCP-173, also known as the Sculpture. Boo. Or as I like to call it, Blinky Blinky, you so stinky. So as I approached the cell, I heard some stones scraping across the floor, which is an apparently normal sound to hear when this SCP is like slithering around. It has two pairs of eyes, so four eyes would be a fitting name really. And a weird, suggestive slit on its face. But the more I thought about it, the more inappropriate my thoughts got. The deal with this one is that you have to maintain eye contact with it at all times or it moves closer and closer and closer. And then it snaps your neck off. As I talk to you guys about each of these SCPs, I'm going to be painting them on these wood slices. I loved painting Georgie so much in my last Turning Mariah Elizabeth into a Squishy video that I wanted to paint on some more wood. I'm gonna be using my trusty Posca pens. Posca pens! The Posca pens actually stick pretty well to the wood, you just have to add a few layers of them, just like you normally do with Posca pens. This one's really violent. You don't want to get on its bad side. In fact, Three people must be inside this thing's cell at all times, and two of them have to maintain eye contact with it and warn each other before either of them blinks. Or else it can be fatal. I know this because Johnny, codename Bozo the Clown, cause he's not the brightest, decided to blink. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you know what happened. 
Bozo lived a good life. It's just that sometimes when you close your eyes, they never open again. Especially when it comes to SCP-173. It's like one of those people who's like, Hey, my eyes are down here. You must maintain eye contact with it at all times or else it gets offended. And my gosh, let me tell you, its containment cell stinked. P.U. It smelled like someone had taken a dookie. The truth of the matter is everybody poops. The floor was covered in blood and feces. It does that whenever the SCP moves around and no one knows why. They're supposed to clean out the containment cell once every two weeks on a bi-weekly basis, but they were running a little behind when I got there, which was a delight. It really was. Anyways, if you're not really good at staring competitions, I suggest you stay clear of this one. So my concept for this one is that it just ate somebody. Yeah, it's not pregnant. It's just fat. I thought I'd make this like thought bubble coming out of its stomach. You know, like the person was saying something in there. But I realize now looking at it, it just kind of looks like a big fart coming out of its butt. I thought that just added to the charm of this piece. So I'm just going to leave things as they are. It was a happy accident. Just to be clear, the let me out is coming from the human inside the belly. It's not a talking fart. Felt like that needed some clarification. The next SCP that I saw on my trip was SCP-999, also known as the Tickle Monster. I must admit, this one isn't really the stuff of nightmares. Quite the opposite, actually. It's one of the good guys. It may look slightly disturbing on the outside, but on the inside, it's a little ball of lovable sweetness. When I walked into its cell, I saw this large gelatinous mass of orange slime. As soon as I came close to it, it jumped on top of me and gave me the biggest hug and nuzzled its slimy self into my face. Its touch kind of felt like it was tickling me. Clearly a very playful creature. It kind of smelled like chocolate mixed with laundry detergent mixed with fresh roses and my favorite, a little hint of Play-Doh. Good stuff. I was carrying around some of my fancy dark roast coffee, and Mr. Tickles really looked like he wanted some, so I gave it to him. Big mistake. It was bouncing off the walls for hours, and then it felt queasy afterwards and threw up everywhere. You're gonna clean that up, right? I felt pretty guilty afterwards because it wasn't moving or eating or doing anything adorable for the rest of the day. It looked dead as a doorknob. Tickles is doing better now, but because of that incident, I got in huge trouble. So I guess caffeine makes it super hyper. The whole time I was there, all it would eat is candy and sweets. It's really drawn to people who are unhappy or hurt in any way, and apparently just being in its vicinity makes you happier. I know I don't smile that much, but I was smiling a ton when I was around the Tickle Monster. It just has that kind of effect on people. I guess in the case of this SCP, the reason it has to be contained is so that people, when they see it, won't, like, hurt it. You know, it is kind of weird looking. You wouldn't want to see that walking outside or something. I don't know about you guys, but I honestly believe the world could use the Tickle Monster right about now. I have these top secret plans to storm the SCP Containment Center and break free the Tickle Monster. I'm gonna need some help in that, so let me know if you're down. Comment down below if you want to storm the SCP Containment Center with me. I'm thinking we could just Naruto run inside. All we have to do is make it past the heavily guarded gates and, you know, the 10 mile radius of pure boiling hot desert, surrounded by snipers. Trust me, I have a feeling we could do this. Don't worry about the snipers. They've got nothing on us. I'm confident we can dodge them. Not to brag or anything. There he goes talking about himself again. But I was captain on my middle school dodgeball team. So yeah, this is the face that the tickle monster made when I walked into the room. I drew a little close up. I remember it like it was yesterday. It had a cute little lollipop in its hand and nothing but pure love in its eyes when it saw me. It was jumping for joy. Anyway, cute stuff aside, there was another SCP that caught my eye. SCP-682. 
This SCP actually had an encounter with SCP-999. Basically, SCP-682 is pure evil. The complete opposite of the tickle monster. You don't want to get anywhere near this thing. They literally have to contain it in an acid bath. But anyways, we were running some experiments and we released SCP-682 into SCP-999's containment area. Tickles did as expected and jumped up and down like a little happy puppy and made some squeaking noises. SCP-682 was completely disgusted by the tickle monster and squashed it like a bug. 682 then began chuckling and feeling ticklish. Tickles crawled up from between 682's toes and began nuzzling it lovingly, causing it to start grinning. It kept grinning and proclaimed that it felt happy. The tickle wrestling continued until 682 was worn out and fell asleep. After 15 minutes passed, we sent in an agent to retrieve Tickles. As soon as we removed Tickles from the room, SCP-682 woke up and let out an unidentifiable wave of energy from its body. It was also laughing like a maniac. We all collapsed to the ground and 682 was able to make its escape, slaughtering everything in its path. Luckily for me, Tickles was able to save me and a few other agents and took us to safety. Some agents were able to contain 682 and bring him back to his holding cell. Despite all of this happening, Tickles actually isn't afraid of 682 and frequently suggests it wants to play with it again. 682, however, says that Tickles can go die. This is another memory of mine when I was touring the facility. I vividly remember 682 putting its paw up against the glass and looking at me like it was... scared? Though I'm not sure why, because it's supposed to be the most evil of them all. They don't like to tell the general public about this stuff, but of course I find it to be my duty to spill all of the gossip about the stuff they don't tell you. You're welcome. Hello there. Have you liked or commented on the video yet? You? I'm looking at you. I can smell your lies. Go ahead. What are you waiting for? What? What's my next line? The teleprompter shut off again.